I acquired this floor buffer for cheap because it doesn't work. First thing I had to do was put a plug on it. And when I put a plug on it, you can see that there's an indicator here, a light, saying that at least electricity is getting up here. However, the motor still didn't work. And when I tried fiddling with the switches up here, I got no tactile feel that anything was connected. So I put a voltmeter down here by the motor to see if I could get a voltage down here. And there was no voltage to be detected. So I took the switch assembly apart, and the assembly basically feeds these two momentary micro switches. And if you squeeze them both at the same time, the motor works. It's funny, the cover for the switch says no serviceable parts inside. So these are the two paddles that go on the handle, and when you pull on these, it turns the machine on. But obviously, if you're trying to muscle the machine around and you grab it by the handles, you don't want to accidentally turn the machine on. So there's this safety switch in here that pushes this little wedge over. And from what I can gather, when you push this button in, and then you flip the paddles up. This point here passes this septum or plenum or whatever you call it. And then this can go down and turn the micro switch on. And I'm not sure what was wrong with this. I took the time to put some silicone on all the moving plastic parts to help free them and move them a little bit. I'm thinking I might take a little bit off of the shoulder here so that this button can press in a little bit further. I'm wondering if the problem is this button's bottoming out and this point here can't quite clear this septum. And it's funny how all these parts have part numbers on them. And they claim there's no serviceable parts, but certainly these switches would be replaceable. You must be able to get these out in the industry. I think assembly is going to be a little tricky because I don't think I can get the wires on these tabs with the whole switch assembled. So I think I'm going to have to try to assemble the switch with the wires attached. To the uh, micro switches in here. A lot of people would be inclined to just blow this out with compressed air, but I think that's just going to scatter a lot of dust around my shop. I prefer to use a paintbrush on the vacuum trick. So I'm trying to use gravity on my side. Seems as though the switch keys on some bosses down here, and the wires that seem to be cooperating. Kind of tight in here, walking acceptably. Well, I sprayed the inside of the lid and I snapped it on and it went without a hitch. Hopefully, I didn't screw anything up. Okay, it's plugged in and you can see like this nothing's happening. When I press this in and give it a quick pull, motors running. Time to move on to the next step. So here's the end of the wire. Uh, this wire it's kind of hard to see. I think it's a pretty beefy gauge. Probably around 10 gauge. Seems uh, thicker than 12 gauge to me. But I wasn't comfortable trying to wrap these around uh, the screws and just screwing them down. I thought the braided wire would fray. And I also wasn't comfortable trying to solder it because the wires were so thick. I thought that would be a little difficult. So anyway I put these crimp connectors on, which I think is a pretty good solution. There's not a lot of room in the back side of the outlet, and I tried looking for a larger one and didn't have a lot of success. So I think what I'm going to do is take these plastic sleeves off and use heat shrink tubing to make those a little smaller. The cord also has several scuffs and abrasions on it, and I went out and got this heat shrink tubing that's gray in color. And I think what I'm going to do is just put that over it and shrink it down instead of, uh, like it was done here, just wrapping them up with electrical tape. Okay, so that's slipped into place. I have a heat gun. have it. Maybe not the best color match, not the most beautiful, but I think it looks a little better than the black electrical tape and certainly offering better protection than nothing at all. Now I just got to do it to every other abrasion and nick and scratch on the cord and boy there's quite a few of them. 
and here it is finished looks a bit like a hodgepodge but I think it's a lot safer I tried to put the heat shrink tubing anywhere where the other sheathing was uh, compromised to the point you could see the wires on the inside of the green or the white or the black and uh, there was one area actually right here I put on two layers because this area the outside was abraded quite a bit the whole integrity of the cord was a little compromised so I just beefed that up a bit I ended up buying 10 feet of this which is about three meters and right now I've got uh, not much left thought I was gonna have plenty left over and I guess I do but I used a lot more than I thought I was gonna so there's one of the wires I took the yellow plastic collar off it these Plastic pieces are a little too beefy for the amount of space I have inside the plug. And I'm going to instead use a piece of heat shrink tubing. And there are the three connectors now, all dressed with heat shrink tubing. And here are the three conductors screwed onto the plug. And that fits in like so. And I think I'm going to put a little heat shrink down in this area. This gray is probably supposed to be up here by the clamp but if you do that that doesn't give you very much room at all. So I reassembled the plug and I have three pieces of heat shrink tubing that I'm going to put up here. And here are the three pieces shrunk on and that's going to go on like so. And there it is all assembled. I had to sand away a little bit of the jaws in there because they were a little bit too too tight to get around this this cord. Looking pretty good. And if I plug her in, you can see it's lighting up. Woohoo! And she works. So my local supply house had a new pad driver, so that was convenient and I needed one. They also sold the skirts that went on it but I felt as though that was a little too much money and where this guy doesn't have dust collection I'm not sure how useful it is this particular pad uh, isn't necessarily for this machine but I just happen to have it so this thing is complete and ready to roll well I picked this thing up for a really good price and I'm relieved that uh, it didn't take a huge amount of work to get it into shape and uh, I hope you got something out of the video I've never done anything like this before so a little bit different for me and uh, if you enjoyed it let me know please leave a comment you probably know more about these things than I do and as always look forward to catching up with you all on the next one